What's up everybody, I'm back and uh, I've got a topic that I think everybody needs to hear considering I'm on my way to Calgary, which is that way, in a couple of days to do a wine event where people are running around and tasting as much as they can, trying to get an idea of some new things or maybe some things that they just love and they want to taste again and again and again, I thought I would give a little bit of advice on how to get the most out of your wine tasting. It's not as easy as it looks. You can get in there for a few hours and leave and forget absolutely everything. I'm sure everyone that likes wine and has been to a wine event has a story like that, whether it was them or a friend. So without further ado, let's get into it. Some ways to maximize your wine tasting event. Intro. Okay, piece of advice number one, pace yourself. Seriously, pace yourself. I know it's one ounce at a time, you're going from booth to booth, if it's that style of tasting, and you're getting a little bit here and a little bit there, and you think, I should be fine, who can't have an ounce of wine at a time? Well, nobody, if you do 300 different ounces of wine, that's just how it goes. It can add up very, very quick, and because it's such a little bit, for such a short period of time, we all assume that we can handle it. It's no big deal. We don't see that effect creeping up on us as the night gets a little bit longer. So definitely, number one, most important thing, pace yourself. It's a long night. Piece of advice number two. This is probably my favorite piece of advice of all of the things that I'm going to say in this video because I think it's very important. Every time you go to a wine event, depending on how it's structured or laid out, they have a map. They have something that can show you where each winery or place that's pouring the wineries that they represent is located. Get familiar with that. Figure out which places you want to go to. Figure out which places you've been dying to taste and you can't believe are actually there. And visit them first. Don't wait until 10 p.m. when it's about time to go and you run over and say, Hey, get me, can I have a little bit? Like, I, I've been really trying to get to you all night but I'm also intoxicated and I'm not gonna actually taste the thing that you're pouring me. So, make sure you get there first, taste what you wanna taste, get familiar with it, figure out if you like it or not, and see if it lives up to the hype that you've built up for it. So, visit the big guys first. Number three, take a few pictures. I know people walk around with a notepad, I've seen it, those people are serious, they have an idea, they have a plan, they know what they're doing, and they're gonna remember all of the things that they tasted and they're gonna read their notes later and so on and so forth, but, not everybody is going to take it that seriously, and that's perfectly okay. There is no reason to take wine seriously, people. It is for pleasure. Not everybody has to be a sommelier as much as it sounds glamorous and all that sort of stuff. Enjoy what you're tasting. Enjoy the wines that have been made simply for your pleasure and for your experience. But take pictures of your favorite bottles. Pretty much every wine tasting you go to is going to have the bottles laying on the table that you're tasting. So get your phone out that has a camera, and if you don't have a camera in your phone, please update yourself and go and get a camera, go and get a phone with a camera. But since we all already have that, just take your phone out, snap a shot of the bottle that you thought was beautiful, and then the next day or two, or whenever you go to the wine shop again to get something that you like, you can reference back to that day and say, that's the one that I want. Show it to the guy at the shop and hopefully he's got it. Makes your life easy and everybody else. Take pictures. Number four, ask questions. I wish more people would do this. Generally, I get a lot of questions when I'm working at these events because I'm kind of outgoing and I try to pull them out of people. But not every person is like that when they're working at these events. But I promise you, they probably do want to answer your questions. They're probably passionate. If they're in this industry and they're working through an event that can be sometimes quite stressful, they probably want to have a little bit of engagement. And they probably have some things to tell you that are interesting or that teach you something that you didn't already know and you'll get a little bit more out of this than just drinking wine. So if you have a question, ask your question. Try to get as many answers as you can and get a little more out of this than sipping a couple ounces of wine or a couple hundred ounces of wine. Number five. Are we on number five? I think I'm on number five. Rinse your glass. If you're at a wine tasting event and they don't have a water jug and a spittoon, and I'll get to those in just a second, beside each place that's pouring wine, then you're at a bad wine event. So if you're at a wine event, I'm sure it's a good one, make sure you use those rinse jugs because going from one winery to the next and mixing the wine from the previous to the wine that you're about to taste 
is a blend that's not supposed to happen. There's no need to create your own style of wine by going from one to the next to the next and never rinsing out your glass. You're not actually getting what they're trying to show you and it's a waste. So take two seconds, get a little bit of water, swirl it around your glass, dump it out. It doesn't need to be completely dry, it's no big deal. Just make sure you get what was in your glass out of it first. And please, please, if there's beer or spirits at whatever event you're at, do not, absolutely do not put your glass in front of somebody with a bunch of foamy beer and ask them to pour their precious red wine. Just don't do that. Number six, so important, those spittoons that I talked about in the last one, use them. It's no big deal. It's not sacrilege. You're not going to offend the person pouring the wine by spitting it out. That's just what you have to do to get the most out of your night. You don't have to do it every single time. It's no big deal. If you really love that wine and you want to swallow it and get all of the effects from it, by all means, go ahead. You can pace yourself and make it through as many as you can, but I promise you, you won't be able to taste them all if you're not using those spittoons. And you're not going to remember much. There's a night after the tasting. You can go crazy at that. Just make sure that you try to get as much as you can out of the event and as much flavor and memory as you can out of what you're tasting. And to do that, you use those spittoons. It might seem gross, it might seem like it's wrong, but I promise you, those things will save your life by the end of the night. So, taste your wine, swirl it around a bit, spit it out in the bucket, and enjoy. Okay, that's it. I don't need to go on and on and on and on and on. It's not supposed to be a difficult thing to go to a wine tasting event. It's supposed to be easy and fun and enjoyable and memorable and all of those wonderful things. So, by all means, take this with a grain of salt or take every bit of advice to heart and try to get the most out of your wine tasting event. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment if you have any comments. If you have questions, fire away. I'll get back to you. Until next time, cheers, my friends.